So we're in Joe's office with Rose Eden. And Rose, you're new to the Chief Joe's family. I think you were supposed to be here last year, but um, yeah, sickness, I illness, surgery. Yeah. I uh, didn't recoup fast enough. Kept you away, and we're glad that you're here. You've got a full, full class, full 25 students. So uh, I would like to know a little bit about who you are. Okay. Well, I'm a Midwesterner. A Midwesterner. Okay. Uh, First generation Swede. Okay. And my father came from Sweden and my grandparents. Ah, so that was my first language. But I received my first set of oils when I was eight. Okay. And uh, we lived in Minnesota. And I would uh, get my mother's paint that she would paint the porch every year with and put on the paint the back side of cereal boxes okay. and use for my. My canvases okay. with oil, and I would copy everything I could find. And um, anyway, uh, so I learned how to draw, and I couldn't wait to get my chores done so I could go and do my art. And so I've been doing it since I was, I remember. I've loved to do it. And I'm not that great at math, but I can see things in terms of color and shapes. Right. And uh, so I grew up in Minnesota, went to college, North Park University in Chicago, okay. met my husband there, and we've been together ever since, and uh, time goes fast when you're, when you're having fun. Yeah, that's right. And so the two of us, anyway, we take uh, groups to Europe every year. Okay. So we've been, or abroad. We've been all over the world, actually, teaching, and all over the United States. Um, but now, in that we just discovered this part of the world in Florida, we uh, sold our place in Minnesota, okay. and we go up to our summer place in Canada for three months, and then we come down to Minnesota, and I, to Florida, actually, and uh, we have a home in Florida. And we are residents of Venice, Florida, okay. on the West Coast. So you've been painting since eight. Yes. Um, professionally since? Well, uh, I started out as a junior high art teacher. Okay. Even though I had been painting all my life. And I worked on my master's at Colorado State in okay. art. So I would say that I felt professional from the time our kids were uh, young, and uh, we have two children, boy and a girl. And um, so I have been painting all my life, and I've taken myself seriously as an artist. And uh, so it's not just a hobby, it's a, a vocation with me. Right. And I, I, I love to do it. but. I also love to teach because I feel like I get selfish, but I get so much from my stu students. Right. But I also want to share what I can. Right. And I always tell them everything I know and then some. So. <laughs> so you've got 25 students. You come here from Florida, uh -huh. and there's a tremendous amount of responsibility as an instructor mm -hmm. to these students who have come from all over. Mm -hmm and paid money to mm -hmm. sit for a week with you. Um, what do you want these students to leave with at the end of the week? First of all, it is a responsibility. I think there are nine or ten states right. represented in this class. And uh, my aim is to teach color. And I try to simplify color and then I teach a warm and a cool color okay. of a yellow and a red and a blue. And so basically, 99% of the color we use are those six colors, which really are three, yellow, red, and blue. Our primary, the primary colors, colors, right. right. Yeah, okay. And all the other colors come from that. Right. And yet the paintings that you'll see in the class are very colorful. And then 
I try not to to be too academic. In other words, I try to be uh, flexible, and I try to learn all the time myself. Right. And so now we're using cotton gauze, and we put the gauze over the a paper, and then we uh, spray it, okay. and uh, drop paint into it, and it follows the gauze and gives all the texture of. In this case, it's a willow tree that we're doing, and we get the the drooping feeling right. of the willow with the gauze and the background behind the hydrangeas along the path, and so it's it's another way to free us up and. To, to not feel too tied into, I have to pull my brush some sort of right. way and all that. And you've got some extraordinary artists mm -hmm. in your class, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, mm -hmm. which is, that's kind of challenging, mm -hmm. isn't it? In a, it is. In and of itself. It is. I mean, right. they're, um, some of the things I've seen, they're... I know, they, they're doing great. They're doing great. Um, it's really So how did you time. develop your palette? I mean, what... Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, when I just I used to be an oil painter, and I painted with knife oils. Okay. But then passed a lot of lot right. of paints and a lot of values, and when I decided I wanted to paint uh, in Europe, and so I took from Zoltan Zabel, okay. and I learned what his palette was, and then I I I, I took from I I thought at the time and were the leading watercolors uh -huh. in the United States, some of them. And Robert E. Wood, the late Robert E. Wood, right. was a fantastic watercolorist from California. And uh, I took a number of his classes. And he never taught the same, nor did he do the same subject. And I tried to imitate that right. with him. And uh, so, I, as a teacher, can go from place to place, and I call them paint-alongs because I've never done the painting we're doing today. Right. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited what I can do and what will happen with it. And so each uh, subject is unique with me. Right. So. And you do big paintings. I mean, you're yeah. using full watercolor sheets, it looks like. When I was in high school, I worked for a billboard company. Okay. And I did all the prom decorations, all that stuff, you know. And I was used to the big strokes and all right. that. And I just have a hard time getting small. Let me borrow the magazine here. Oh, okay. So this is um, an example of Rose's work, which I chose to be on the workshopper. And so that kind of a painting, how long would that have taken you to paint? Okay. Uh, I, that, that painted a few people I know very well, by the right. way. And they were, they were walking below us in uh, Italy. And uh, I did this from a photograph. Right. And I carefully drew it. And it took me maybe two weeks. Okay just about every day to really work this one out. This was also in Splash. So when you, I've talked to some artists and they they paint to tell a story. Uh, some artists paint to, they create compositions and then fill it with color like um, Frank Webb. Mm -hmm. um, what, when you find a subject, what is it you want to tell the viewer in your painting. Okay. I start with, I'll use this to, to, to the viewer can see right. this. Yeah. I, I start with the, the interest area. Okay. I always decide what I want to bring out the most. Right. And in that area, I try to use the lightest lights. Right. Often the darkest dark, not always, but often and the brightest brights. Right. And in this case, I have all three of those elements. And uh, so, um, so I use very pure color in those elements. And then the rest of it, I uh, work with a lot of uh, layers. And we start out with our yellows, our reds, our right. blues, okay. and tip okay. it around okay. and let it blend. So you're building on top of mm -hmm. other 
transparent water. Mm, right. Uh, They're all transparent. Okay. Um, so you started teaching? I was teaching when our son was through and sold. I started to teach and I quit when he was coming into the eighth grade. Okay. And because I didn't want to have him in class, and he was really mad at me because he wanted me to keep teaching. And it was interesting with the kids because they'd come popping down to their right. mother's art room. And uh, they, they were upset when, they, when I didn't teach when they were coming there. And uh, my daughter paints though, and they're both very artistic. That, it, it does run in families, it, it seems does. like, like yeah. singing. Yeah. Um, the father and mother sing and yeah. the kids end up singing. Yeah. I don't know how that works, but... Uh, so, um, let's say I'm a viewer watching this and I want to paint. Mm -hmm. Do you have any words of wisdom for me who kind of... Um, I don't know where to go, I don't know how to start, I don't right. know. Well, we have three ranked beginners really? in this class. And if you look at all of their work together, you could never find them in the class. Okay. And because if, if they have the right material and they start out, I, I feel like this method helps uh -huh. because we wet the whole page, we get the paint on, we tip it, we let it mix, yeah, we spatter saw, yeah. it, uh, trying to create a freedom of your innermost being right. uh, to yeah. begin with. And uh, they've been doing that. And then we just keep pulling in with another layer and uh, shapes against shapes. I do talk about composition, but it's not the primary focus of my work. Okay. It's color. And simplifying color, actually. And let the composition kind mm. of take its place. You know, mm -hmm. it's, every artist I've talked to has a different approach to getting an image on the page. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm amazed at how many different approaches there mm -hmm. are to art. Because I tend to categorize and say, well, this is the way it goes. Well. Um, everybody has a different approach. I mean, right. it sounds like what you're doing with your class is you're creating a space where they can't fail. Where Hopefully. they Where they can, you know, tip this way, tip that way. And if they're not afraid of yeah. letting it go, right. they can come away with something. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, and then in watercolor, you can dry you can draw on top of it, you right. can erase it. It's it's quite forgiving. Actually, once you learn the techniques, yeah. it's just as forgiving as, as a while. Yeah. Well, that's good. Do you have a, to finish off, do you have a Cheap Joe's story to tell or anything? What are, what are your impressions about oh. the studio and the place? Well, here? anybody that can come up to this workshop and the facility and of course the shop next door right. and uh, the I think it's the friendliness too not only here but in our hotel and of the town and uh, but you people with your advertising you come across as being the people you are and when you come here you really feel it yeah and I think it's just invigorating. If, if you ever want a vacation in the East, this is it. It's well, we're in the mountains great. of North Carolina, and so there is a, there is a bit of Southern hospitality you still, still ingrained in the people here. And, um, traffic is a little bit more now than it was 20 years ago. Mm, I suppose. Probably not as bad as it is in Florida. No. <laughs> uh, well, Rose, it's been real nice talking to you and kind of getting to know you. And I guess you'll be back in, in a couple years. of years, in mm -hmm. two years. So, um, 2018, 
And uh, if this class is any indication, you better sign up quick because <laughs> you filled. We, uh, you can only fit 25 people right, in that room. Right. And you've got 25 right. people. A lot of instructors, you know, you're talking 18 to 20, mm -hmm. which is a good size, mm -hmm. but I think for um, for a first timer like yourself, that says a lot that you can fill up. Oh, well, thank you. So, and uh, I love your work. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, and now that you say that you're first generation of Swedish, I can <laughs> actually see the. Uh, so the, the the Swedes make sandwiches that they put under their. What are those called? <laughs> I don't the, know. The hot pockets. I oh, mean, no, that's in, a Polish. <laughs> in Minnesota, I thought it was cold during the winter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so they'd heat up the sandwiches, the workers. I there, suppose. I guess. So. I suppose, but you so. know, you get used to it. Uh, yeah. You have your down and your everything. Do you still speak right. Swedish at all? A little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. We go every few years. That's not Dankeschein, is it? That's not Swedish? No, that's German. Is that German? Okay, that was... Farsa good. Farsa it's good. Huh? Swedish. It's Germanic. It is. And it's in its face. It yeah. is. Well, thank you yeah. very much and uh, welcome to Boone thank and Cheap Joe's and uh, hopefully we'll get lots of response. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks.